안녕하세요. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, we are very honored to be here as students from Myanmar and we're from National Management Degree College. Today, we're going to present our case studies of Uniqlo. I'm Asian Pipu and I'm going to start with a brief introduction. Uniqlo is a Japanese clothing brand known for its high quality and affordable clothing. As this motto made for all, the concept of the Uniqlo is to provide clothing to everyone everywhere. So, starting from the single stores in Japan in 1984, it is now operating in 24 country and it is also the world's third largest retailer behind Zara's and Asian. So, you all might be wondering why we chose Uniqlo. It is because the fame of Uniqlo arose from the Great Recession and is operating differently from other fast fashion. So, this case study will focus more on how Uniqlo went through to make this present day success, featuring unique strategies. Our presentation will be in five sessions. First, a journey to worldwide that covers its milestone, critical times, and breakthrough strategies. Second, we will move on to the success driver and sustainability. Then we will point out its current position and suggestion and finish with the key findings and lessons. So let's start with a journey to worldwide. In 1994, Japan was suffering from great recession and consumer purchasing power was low. So Uniqlo decided to produce affordable high quality clothing by reducing the manufacturing costs like also in the factories in China where the labor cost was cheap. By this, Uniqlo was able to launch the 1900 yen fleece, which is about 50% lower than other competitors, thereby gaining more popularity. <clears throat> However, there comes a critical time for Uniqlo. As we see here, there was a significant drop in sales and income just after reaching to a New peak in 2001. This is because of a failure in the very first overseas UK market due to over standings and sales began to slow in Japan as well. So, Uniqlo strategically downsized the UK business and worked on more product development and market development. Mainly, it did not sacrifice the quality. Unit, uh, it only focused on controlling the inventories and reducing the expenses year by year. In this way, Uniqlo gained competitive advantages, made a recovery within two years, and entered the US market. At first, Uniqlo slowly and wisely opened the stores, learning from the mistakes in the UK. However, due to increased competitions and later brand awareness, Uniqlo opened the very first school of flashy stores in New York City. Since that time, sales has been rising significantly, as we see here, until 2010. This is one of the milestones of the Uniqlo, and opening global flashy stores in major cities become the Uniqlo effective strategies. There comes the critical times again. Since the US market is very broad, it is still challenging in American nation. Despite expanding the numbers of sales, it suffered from sales drops and operating laws and pricing become not so different due to the rise of other fast fashion. So what are the breakthrough right strategies again? Uniqlo differentiate from Gap by focusing more on its business market and attracting especially men shopper. At the same time, Uniqlo launched a new global brand campaign, Lifewear, to deliver the message of its high quality business globally. In this way, Uniqlo uh, make it say rise against and even beat Gap and become the world's third largest retailer. And we're convinced that entering Asian market is the major turning point for Uniqlo because the revenue of Uniqlo International exceeds that of Uniqlo Japan in 2019. And surprisingly, it turns out that 50% of the overall international revenue was from Uniqlo Greater China. So what made Uniqlo Greater China enjoy the success? Moreover, Uniqlo entered the Asian market since 2002 and operating in nine country with big popularities. So how Uniqlo is keeping this position in Asian market as well? The answer for Greater China is Uniqlo good market awareness because it is the first international brand that really invests in Chinese social media like setting up the virtual flash stores on Chinese e-commerce Taobao and engaging its customer on rare brand WeChat and etc. To give a solid answer for the entire Asian market, it is its adaptability to change and difference between culture while maintaining the business brand image. For example, for Indian market, Uniqlo inspired the everyday wears of Indian men and women for design creation. Well, this is a brief journey of Uniqlo and success driver will be mentioned by next person. Hello, I'm Taya Dia, and I will present the reasons behind Uniqlo success and success drivers. First, I would like to mention the leadership of the founder, Tata Hiyanai. As his famous net without a soul company is net theme, he created the soul of Uniqlo with a key themes, which are helping Uniqlo to grow globally. Moving on to its corporate culture, it has highly diversified workforce. The organization structure is flat with challenging working environment, and Uniqlo also encourages employee involvement. So we analyzed that Uniqlo is used in the midst of Asian and Western style. In addition, Uniqlo has installed culture with stretcher uniform practices like phone techniques or how to greet and help the customer. For that, Uniqlo has Uniqlo University and all the new employees are trained for three months. Moreover, Uniqlo also created a position of customer satisfaction store manager and is also give incentives to their employee. By this install culture, the employees are more committed to their works and it turns out that there is only 1% of dissatisfied customers according to the annual reports.
West Northern Uniqlo is really good at branding and communicating. Even though online platforms are becoming a major trend, Uniqlo does not forget to offer unique physical shopping experiences. Uniqlo also launched Uniqlo IQ to create a more personal connection with customers, like helping the customers or even recommend the product. By the use of artificial intelligence, Uniqlo IQ can be used via applications or digital version stores. And for more customer involvement, Uniqlo has its yearly made QD Grand Prix, Uniqlo T-shirt design contest each year with a different themes to attract the fans of its collaborative partners around the world. Therefore, in brief, the combinations of leadership, strong corporate culture, uh, branding and communicative strategy, and its customer-centric approach are the part of the reasons for the present positions of Uniqlo. The next person will present about key success factors. Hi everyone, I'm Yabrin Jo and today I'll be presenting what are Uniqlo key success factors and how Uniqlo is making the world a better place of sustainability. So let's start with the key success factors. As you can see here, Uniqlo's brand promise, digitalizations and innovations are the main pillars that led to the success of Uniqlo. Uniqlo is very popular for being able to deliver its brand promise, which is to provide high quality clothing with affordable prices. So to be able to always deliver it, Uniqlo has quality assurance committee to give the quality standards and detailed instructions. And the British Petro Bama works with the body quality inspector for fabric testing before production. A Uniqlo also get the technical support from the Takumi team, which is a group of engineers to ensure the quality. And there's also a product quality and customer care team to collect customer feedback. And for procurement, Uniqlo has material development team to connect and negotiate lolly with a fabric manufacturer around the world. So let's move on to digitalization. As Uniqlo has gradually transformed from being a domestic chain to a global chain, it has been repositioning itself with an online presence. Apart from the website, Uniqlo also focuses on online social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Moreover, it has started its mobile application since 2014. And there is no doubt that Uniqlo is brilliant in launching creative and collaborative marketing campaign along with Gashi hashtags and user journey that content on social media. And its latest hashtag campaign is hashtag UD Play Your World, which is a collaboration with TikTok to promote its UD graphic t-shirt. So next is innovation. Uniqlo is well known for fabric innovation. And as Uniqlo founder Tadashi Yanai said, Uniqlo is not a fashion company, it's a technology company and uses a high-tech approach and form partnership with Japanese manufacturer to innovate fashion. And one of the noteworthy innovation is heat tech, which is an outstanding line of comfort clothing to keep you warm in cooler temperature and it was able to sell over 1 billion pieces within 15 years. A Uniqlo also has the Genius Innovation Center, which is designed to reduce water usage by up to 99%. So along with it, the next topic is about sustainability. Uniqlo's carry out several sustainability activity and there is sustainability mission statement, which is unlocking the power of clothing. So people are becoming more aware of the environmental impacts of goods and services. So Uniqlo aim to create new value by solving problems for the people, planet, and community. By people, Uniqlo is dedicated to making empower workplaces. To support the women empowerment, Uniqlo has formed an alliance with UN women. And by planet, it means Uniqlo is committed to reducing its environmental impact. And what is amazing is, in 2019, Uniqlo had successfully eliminated the use of plastic shopping bags in its stores by substituting them with eco-friendly paper bags. And by community, Uniqlo is devoted to providing happiness through its clothing and improving people's life. And currently, Uniqlo is supporting, uh, providing support to the people who are suffering from COVID-19. Through its sustainability approach, Uniqlo is creating the world for a better place for everyone. And the next presenter will talk about the present standards of Uniqlo. Hi everyone, I'm Ikamundu. Firstly, I would like to highlight the financial performance of Uniqlo from 2015 to today. Sales at Uniqlo Japan were steady until 2017 and on the other hand, there was a slight rise in revenue and operating profit of Uniqlo International. After that, revenue and operating profit of both Uniqlo International and Japan rose because of its new pricing strategy. And starting from 2018, Uniqlo International sales became even higher than that of Japan. As the company is booming, Tashiyana has set a goal to become the world largest clothing retailer in 2020. But unfortunately, Uniqlo suffered a dramatic sales drop because it had to temporarily close over 300 stores due to COVID-19. However, recently in 2019, Uniqlo has just entered the Indian market to make it another growth center because it has the second largest population behind China. Uniqlo's recent collaboration with Manga has been selling online since July.
Based on our analysis, we found out two concerns which are important for our future Uniqlo. First, Uniqlo has to improve its sales during COVID-19 pandemic, and the second is to achieve its goal. So here are the five things we like to suggest. First of all, Uniqlo needs to more focus more on its e-commerce platform. It would be better to have a customer loyalty program like offering reward points for each dollar spent. And we also suggest accepting all form of payment in its tool. Second, it should refresh its new collection and new collection by updating and do more fashionable basic collection or offering old vintage basic collection. That we advise to stay connected with a customer by sending messages or emails about head tips during COVID-19. Both we recommend that Uniqlo sells a new line of products and donate some percentage of profits to the community as wallet sharing. Last but not least, Uniqlo should be an environmental supporter for the community. For this, we suggest launching a runway event regarding environmental issues. And next presenter will conclude the presentation. Now you've seen the story of Uniqlo and how they are managed their way up to the top three. For the full decade, we found that Uniqlo learned from the failure and made a breakthrough of it, and it did not give up on keeping up with its commitment by taking One full advantage of emerging technology. Moreover, it values customer satisfaction, but does not forget to make its employee feel special too. And undoubtedly, Uniqlo is attempting not only to be a leading fashion retailer, but also a good company that contributes to society as well. So, what can we learn, and what are the recommendations for students regarding their prospect career? I'll let you address four lessons that we learned from this case study. First, we don't need to follow the crowd, and second, stick to the core value. Moreover, we should try to differentiate from others, and no matter what kind of challenges we face, find ways of overcoming them, learn from the mistakes, or even turn them into opportunity. If we make a great use of this, the gear will be in the right place and they will turn, and we will achieve what we desire. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you, and we'll be grateful to take any questions.